Hi, it's Nazara from Nazara's Fine Crafts, and today I'm going to teach you how to do my towel toppers. This channel is a crochet channel, well, it's crochets and crafts. Uh, I do instructional uh, videos on different stitches of crochet, how to do different projects of crochet. I do yarn unboxing, subscription yarn kits, things like that. Uh, if you like that kind of video, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. I do have a March giveaway going on right now that ends on the 31st and the winner will be announced April 1st. So if you want to get into that, I will link the video in the description below and you can check out how to enter that giveaway, free yarn, who want, doesn't want free yarn. So for this project, you're going to need a towel. I like to use 100% cotton towels for my uh, projects. I, I get my towels mostly from Dollar General. They're popping up everywhere. Sorry if you hear my son in the background. He's playing with Legos. I like to get 100% cotton towels. I usually get them at Dollar General, but I have gotten them from Walmart and other places, even Tuesday morning when, like for Christmas towels, things like that. You want a crochet hook. So I use, I usually use a 4.5 zero or 4.25 millimeter this one is a g6 or 4.25 millimeter boy hook i like the smaller hooks because it's a tighter it's a tighter knit at the top so you need a pair of scissors you need a yarn needle so i have two yarn needles here i prefer the smaller one the larger one's going to put a big hole in the top of your towel topper and a sharper point as well as the small on the smaller one, but it still has a big enough eye hole that I can actually put the yarn through, which is really nice. So try to use the smaller one than the bigger one, unless you only have the bigger one. And then you need yarn. I've seen a lot of people do acrylic yarn. But I prefer, if I'm going to have a 100% cotton towel, I want a 100% cotton topper as well so that the washing is the same. This one is Symphonia. I found this at Hobby Lobby a while back. It is 100 grams or 200 meters, 3.52 ounces or 218 yards. It's 100% mercanized cotton. You don't have to use mercanized cotton. Regular regular or old cotton, the kind that's not shiny, is just fine as well. So don't feel like you need the, the fancier cotton. Uh, let's see, this one I got on sale, woo! -hoo. So it's a sport weight. It is, it says to hand wash. Hold on, let me take this sticker off. Hand wash with water with mild soap. I don't see a problem with washing this in the washing machine. I haven't had any issues with it yet. So it's made in Mexico and this is called this color is Verde Cristal. What I like to do is I like to look at the design of the towel here. I'll fold it out. So that is the full design. I look on both sides. Some of these, the the line is not very straight. So I'll look at each side to see which one's straighter. Let's see, this one does a, this one kind of goes down and then up and then down. So I like this side better. It's more straight. And then you want to fold the towel where it barely shows that back design at the very top because you're going to be sewing across this top line and you don't want it to sew into your pattern. So I look at the towel also and that's such a cute towel and I look at the colors and I'm like okay I could do this dusty blue I could do black if I want I could do a nice pale yellow I could even do a mauvey, mauvey, uh, what is that, almost a rusty mauve color. Or I can do this greenish color. 
I chose to do the greenish color. It's not exact, but it does go really well with it. You could even do this light green, but you want to pull out a color that you like in there. I did have a customer at a uh, craft booth actually tell me that if I did these in the toppers in darker colors and the towels in darker colors that I would get more customers. But I think it all depends on the design. Yeah, she said darker would be better, but I think it all depends on the kitchen. I have ki a kitchen that's in a yellowish and then our dining room's in a green. So it's kind of country, country chic. This towel would actually go really well in it. I can like a design without it matching my kitchen and I don't want to use that towel because it doesn't match. I actually got a couple sets of these. So, and I'm doing the mauve rusty color with the other one. But let me show you the finished project with another one. So, this one is Happiness is Homemade. If you look, you see this line? You see how big it gets down here compared to over here? So I had to choose which one was best and they both, they were both crooked. With my towels, a lot of the tutorials that I watched, um, it curled the whole way around. So when mine's laying on the oven, I like mine to, for the pattern in the front to lay flat. So I developed a way to make it where it curved around back here, but it laid flat in the front. And then you just fold that down and I haven't added a button yet to this one but you see how I could have pulled I could have put this green with this one even with this bluish green there I could have done black I could have done gray dark blue but I thought the yellow with the yellow accents was really cute for this one uh, but let's go back to our other towel this one's the back you want to and the reason I know that is because the pattern's all the way at the top there. So flip it back over. You're going to make sure that the pattern here is at the very top from the back. You want to make sure it's flat. Another thing you want to look for is to make sure that this seam down here is overlapping the, the back seam a little bit more so it just it makes it when it's laying flat on your oven it makes it a little more presentable so first thing we do is we take our yarn and we're gonna pull about let's see one foot two foot three foot I'd say approximately four foot of yarn off and cut it. Set that to the side for now. Thread your needle. Oop, come on. And then I like to pull the tail to about three quarters the length of the the yarn that I'm using. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in between the towel in the middle and come up through right past this border you see how it's a double dead over border and I'm gonna pull it to about an inch to two inches tail and then you're gonna tie it off I like to just tie it normally once and then do like a surgeon's knot and then what you're going to do is you're gonna take this knot and kind of move it back underneath your towel and it's hard to see this but you're gonna lay this tail flat against the crease of the fold if you have a surface to lay your towel on to work on even if it's your lap it works out better because uh, then your towel doesn't move around so much and you don't have to make sure you're going straight so now you it looks like it's coming out of the middle. You want to hold that because the tail's going to try to move. What I like to do is I like to flip the yarn up over my hand here 
and you'll see why in just a second but you're going to go right here at the edge again of the border and you're going to come up through the middle and your yarn will probably try to knot up on you a little bit but you're going to pull just like that where it's folded over and you see the tails starting to get tucked under there you're going to only go about a fourth of an inch over so I use like my pinky nail over and keep that yarn up here so you can bring your needle through the through the loop and then you're just going to pull up all the way through and you're going to do this all the way over pull it tight make sure your yarns looped up about a fourth of an inch pull it through so I don't have a set amount of stitches that I do all the way over it all it varies depending on the yarn that you use as well as how spaced out your stitches are so once again pull it all the way through you're going to do this all the way across until you get to the other side oh something I didn't say this should have been a given you're not going to go very far down from the top of it an eighth of an inch maybe you don't want to go down here because then you're going to go into your design over here but you don't want to do it up here on the edge either because you're not going to have as much of a hold so go about an eighth of an inch down make sure your tail does not go into your into your towel if you don't feel like this would be secure enough you can double, go ahead and double up your yarn but I like it with the single just fine I've never had an issue with it I actually it's a lot more stiff if you do it with double so it depends on what you like so But as I was telling you earlier, it's not an exact amount that's going across here because the yarn and the stitch, how many stitches you're doing. But there will be an exact number when you get up here to the top. So I will show you that in just a moment. And don't worry if your pattern from the back is showing just a little bit. Alright, so now that I'm at the end here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the towel again and come up through the loop. And then you can remove your needle because you're done with sewing. And at this point, you're going to reattach your yarn ends. So I hadn't shown this before. A really cool way to attach yarn ends here is wrap it around your index finger to make a loop, make it crossed over. You're going to lay this piece of yarn flat and what you do is you put the loop on one side but you want to make sure that the crossing string is on top of both of your strings. You're going to wrap it around Put it through your loop 
and pull as tight as you can. And then you're going to do the same with the other side. You're going to wrap it around your finger. Make sure that that tail is on the top of both of your strands. You're going to loop it through and pull it as tight as you can. Then you're going to take past your knots and you're going to pull it as tight as you can together. So you have this knot. And then what I do is I flatten it here, flatten it there, and you're going to cut off your tails as close as you can to your yarn. And it makes a pretty clean... Where's my knot? <laughs> you have to feel it. There it is. <laughs> so it makes it as clean as you can. Some people cut even closer to their knot to make it where it's almost non-existent. But I am so scared it's going to come off. So I do cut it pretty close. All right. So now after we have it tied, we're going to have right side up right side up and then so your thread should be on the front side or you're going to just work on whatever's opposite right now so we're going to go through this first loop and we're going to chain two we're going to flip our work over I like to you see how it that first front stitch divided that stitch? I don't know if you can see it very well. I like to go ahead and double crochet. And it's the same stitch. It's just separated by that, that thread. But I like to go ahead and double crochet in that one as well. You can see it a little better there where it's divided. And then you're going to double crochet in each space across. So we're at the end here, we're going to go ahead and chain two again, flip our work. So, and then for the next 16, okay, so we're going to decrease double crochet in the next two. So if you don't know how to do that, let me go ahead and show you. You yo or loop around, yarn over, you go through. You pull through once, pull through two. Now you have two loops on your hook. You go ahead and yarn over again, go through, pull through, pull through. Now you have three. Now you're gonna pull through all three of those. You're gonna do that eight times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you'll have a double crochet and then eight double crochet decreasing or decreasing double crochet. And then you're going to go and you're going to double crochet normally, say in the next seven. So that's three, 
four, five, six, seven. Now what you're gonna do, and a stitch marker will come in handy for some for this part if you have a stitch marker. I didn't put that in there, but so you're gonna go back to the end. You're gonna count this first. So you're gonna count your chain as one, and then you're gonna count back 16 rows. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six, well, 17 rows if you count this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So you're gonna double crochet until you get to that 17th one. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more. So on this one, I have 14 double crochets in the center. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so now you're going to do 8 decreasing double crochets again. 1... And then you want 1 double crochet at the end to keep it even. So now you're going to chain two and turn again. Now if you don't have 14 in the middle here that's fine. You can have 12, you can have 16. It's okay and it doesn't have to be an even number. So don't worry about that number there. So we're going to turn our work and now we're going to do four decreasing double crochets in the top of those other double crochets. So you got your chain two, and then one, two, three, and four. And then you're going to regular double crochet across until you get to until you get to right before your eighth double crochet because you're going to have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're going to double crochet 14 times across or the same amount of stitches that you had originally. So I've got 14, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. Now I'm going to do four decreasing double crochets in the top of those. So one, two, three, four, and then one double crochet in your chain top chain stitch. So chain two again. Okay, so this time we're going to do chain two and then two decrease double crochets. So one, two, 14 double crochet across, one,
14. And then two decrease double crochets. One, two, and then double crochet, chain two, do one double crochet decrease, and here's where you're going to want to start counting the top stitches, so one, two, and then 14, so I'm going to have 16 at the end, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then one double crochet decrease and one double crochet. So I have a total of 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 stitches across. Now I'm going to continue to chain two and then do one decrease until I have 10 top stitches across. So one, two, chain two, double crochet decrease, there's my second stitch, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Decrease sixteen. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Chain 2, decrease, that's 2, double crochet, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Chain two. Turn. That's one. Decrease. Two. Double crochet. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10, decrease, 11, and 12, chain 2, alright, so this row I'm going to do the decrease one more time and then I should have 10 across, so 1, decrease, it's 2, double crochet, 3, 4, Five, six, seven, eight, decrease, nine, and 
can. So, and then we're going to go ahead and count our rows. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I like to do my buttonhole on my 12th roll or 12th row and then do a decorative little rounded edge. So with this yellow one, see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So now we're just going to double crochet across ten until we get to row twelve. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're on my tenth row, chain two, turn, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Two, chain two, turn your work. This is row 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Six, seven, eight, nine. Sorry, ten. All right, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now we're on row twelve. So, chain two, turn your work, and what we're going to do is we're going to two double crochet in the next two, and then we're going to decrease double crochet in the next two, chain two. Now if you have a smaller button you can just chain one it'll pull it tighter so the whole smart smaller but I like to use big buttons because my husband's kind of rough with my towels and he um, he'll pull it off if there's not a big enough button so then you're not sk skipping any stitches you're going to go into a double crochet decrease again in the next two. You see it creates a little bit of a buttonhole. And then you're going to double crochet in the next two and double or and then double crochet in the top of your chain. So turn your work, don't chain any. And we're going to skip two spots and we're going to double crochet three times in that spot right before the hole. So three. And then we're going to double crochet. I don't like to double crochet around the chain. I like to go ahead and go through each chain space. So one double crochet in each chain space. So that's two double crochets. If you do it the other way, it pulls it a little bit um, and it doesn't stay spaced out. But if it's easier for you, go ahead and do it. And then we're going to three double crochet in the next stitch. We're going to skip these two and we're going to slip stitch in the top of the chain. And here you're going to cut about a three or four inch tail. You're going to tie your knot or just weave in your ends if that's all you do. I like to tie a knot just to be more secure. And then I like to weave in my ends. So. All right, and then trim what you have left. And there it is right there. So you should be able to fold it right here 
where those little kind of like shoulders are. And then you have your, your top here. So you're gonna fold it down and depending on your oven, some ovens have thinner handles and bigger handles. I usually like to put the button about three rows up from the towel. So there's a large enough space for almost any oven. So now we need to go find a matching button. I have lots of buttons here. You don't have to match the color of the topper if you don't want to. Uh, I usually like to. You can do whatever color it suits you. But I do like to, I usually get pairs of the towels. So I like to match the buttons just in case somebody wants a pair. Ooh, I like that one. I like those two. I think they match pretty well. And then I really like that shininess, but doesn't really go. Mm, yeah, I think I'll go with the light ones. But you want the buttons to be twice as large as the hole that you made so that they don't slip through. The larger the button, the better. I would not do one like this size because it'll slip through. You see the difference in sizes there? Big old jar of buttons. What I do is I save pickle jars, baby food jars, and things like that. And I sort my buttons out. Then you're just going to take the same color yarn, or you can do different color yarn, and thread your needle. Make sure that you have a needle that the whole thing can go through the buttonhole. I have started to sew and then got stuck with that, uh, with the eye hole, so. And then fold your, your towel down, start from the back, and you're going to look for, you're going to look for, I like to do it right here in this this uh, between where the rows are connected. I think it gives it a little bit more stability. Or you can do it around like two of the double crochets. Well this one has a four buttonhole so this is what I'll do for that one. Same place but I'm going to go above where the connection is and then I'm going to come down here to below where the connection is when I stick it through the button. And then I'm going to come back up through beside that first insert and come up back through the buttonhole, come back through the buttonhole. So it's going around the chain instead of through it. And I will go ahead and do it twice around. twice through the button just to make sure because this is going to get some use unless you're you just have decorative towels and nobody uses them at your house but we use ours and they withstand pretty well so I'll do a regular knot and then I'll do two surgeon knots just to make sure and then we're going to trim it as close as we can because we don't want little stringies flying around. But there's our towel. Let's see if I can zoom out here a little. Oh, that's a zoom in. No zoomy zoomies. Zoomy zoomy. So, so it should hang flat just like that. And then you just button it. And there you go. So that's our towel topper. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below for more tutorials like this. I hope you liked it and we'll see you next time. Bye!